to It's About Time on Think Tech from our downtown studio in the core of Honolulu. I'm your host, Becky Sampson, a professional speaker, author, and coach. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut and need a little help with direction. Resurrecting our passion and knowing which next right step we need to take in our business and our personal life. So joining me on the show today is my dear friend, Obam Bowen, a master career strategist, entrepreneur, and author. And today we're gonna to be talking about success, achievement, and the next level growth. So thank you for coming today. Absolutely, it's a pleasure being oh. here on the show and having the opportunity to spend some time with you today. I know, you're so uh, much, you're, you just flew in last night. I did, I, yes. did, I did. And you come to the island sometimes? I do, often. Uh, so my wife and I try to get here at least four times a year. Yeah. And we'll try to stay at a minimum of about a month. This is the first time we're staying less than a month. We'll be here for three weeks, so we leave on the 8th. Uh, sad, I know. I, know. <laughs> I asked you, I was like, when are you coming back on the island? And you're like, this day. I'm like, right, come on my show the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, let's get going. But you know, it's, it's funny because um, Richard Branson. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Richard says, whenever an opportunity show up, say yes, and then figure mm -hmm. out how to do it. Jump. That's why I said yes, and I figured out how to get here. <laughs> that is so awesome. You know, it's interesting. Um, when I first came to the island, uh -huh. I think you and I met the first week I was here. We did. I think it was like the second, the second or the third day when you, when you got in. So we're repeating the process. I love it. Yeah, but it. I look a little bit more Hawaiian now. You do. Now like, you're completely aloha <laughs> right now. I love it. When we first met, I have to laugh because people, you know, a lot of people come to this island. A lot of people go from the island. And you know, this is my first time living here. Right. But when I came here and I showed up when you and I were meeting, and you were like, oh, heck no, girl. <laughs> like, I was in my business suit and my stilettos, yeah. and, and you're like, yeah, that doesn't work here. Yeah, it's like, you're, you're gonna have to get a little more. I love the aloha look. I'm oh. really, this, this fits you. I, I love I've it. got my sandals on. Look at it, you're no, completely so, aloha. I know. <laughs> you feel the spirit. I love it. You're awesome. I love it. You're Thank awesome. you. Thank you. But I know the first time we met, I mean, one of the things that I absolutely Absolutely love about you is that you've got a real passion for helping people kind of get to the core of what they want and, and getting to their passion and helping them get that out and go share their message I do, and that's yeah. I think that's one reason why you and I sat there at that Starbucks for five, <laughs> five and a hour. half hours <laughs> well, we could have stayed longer yeah huh. I, I think both of our spouses were like what's going on here yeah. and hunger took over too <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, true. Spouse and hunger. You can't go wrong with those two. We got to fix them both. Please I them know. Both. Yeah. Well, tell everybody kind of like who you are, what, because you you have a vast amount of experience that has kind of brought you to this point of being able to help people. Kind of tell them where you're from and what you do. Why you do? Well, you um, let's look at it this way. So, <clears throat> who I am today really mm -hmm. stemmed from who I was yesteryear, not yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I spent 20 years as a Marine. Mm -hmm. I retired in 09. Mm -hmm. My first duty station was actually here on Oahu. Mm -hmm. I was stationed at Kaneohe Bay. Mm -hmm. So I fell in love with the island then. Mm -hmm. I, my first four years was spent here. And then I came back a second tour. Mm -hmm. And once I retired, my wife and I come back every single year. Mm -hmm. And obviously, once you get bitten by the aloha bug, yes. you, you, know, you don't want to go anywhere else. So. In the winter, we become more Hawaiians, mm -hmm. and even in the warmer months, we'll come to just so. There's no excuse to come to Hawaii. It's mm -hmm. Hawaii. I know. Right? But who I am today, um, my wife and I own eight different companies. Mm. Uh, I've written three books that sold close to half a million copies, so mm. those are doing well in its own right. I'm a coach, mentor. A uh, lot of my large companies and corporations that I do coach are like Walmart stores, Jaffa mm -hmm. Cosmetics, Night Media Covio, Chevrons, and so on and so, so mm -hmm. forth. What I found with a lot of those companies after about eight, nine years of coaching with them was I wasn't getting the personal gratification myself that I wanted, mm -hmm. the personal interaction that mm -hmm. I needed. So I started doing coaching for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, startups. Mm -hmm. And then I realized more of my passion lied with those who have already started up. They've kind of got over the hump initially, mm -hmm. but they want to kind of scale and go to the, next, to level, the next level, take it to the next mm -hmm. level, right? So being a next level growth specialist, it's all about the choices we make and the things that we do. Mm -hmm. So I got really tuned into what happens in the mechanics of your mind mm -hmm. because Everything we do first starts in the mind, and mm -hmm. then it happens in how we talk to ourselves, so the mm -hmm. internal conversation. Yeah. And then when we actually say out loud and the actions we take, there's kind of a congruency with there. So 
I developed a methodology understanding that everything first starts in the mind, mm -hmm. then it comes out with what we say, what we say influence our actions, and then our actions repeated over time creates results. Yeah. So the way to change results in, or the direction of a company or an individual is to go back to the root of it and change how they think. Yeah, I call it the back it up work, right? Yeah, yeah. We've talked about that on the show too, is that you gotta be able to see what's going on, the result that you're getting, do you want it or do you not? And then back it up, yeah. right? Back it up to the very core, which is really your mind. Always, yeah. And, and you are a, uh, you're in psychology, you're a psychologist? I'm in you... psychology, so I have a PhD in human behavior and psychology. Mm. So I kind of merged the two together and my mm -hmm. work's the leading work in the world today. So now uh, at the UN, I am the uh, human potentialist authority mm. because there's no other work that kind of garners around mine. Um, it's kind of a great position to be in, but I stay on the forefront of it. It's one of the reasons why I coach and mentor so much so I can stay ahead of um, the curve. And every year we'll put out a new paper in academia about it. You're only really supposed to put out about one every three years, but I'm, yeah. a little, I'm an overachiever, so. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little, that's probably why you know about success. About, just a bit. Yeah, so you said it really kind of starts with the mindset. It does. How, do you, how do you get people in that right mindset? I'll tell you how I get myself out first mm -hmm. and then helped a lot of people understand because when I figured it out for myself, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, okay, I'm on to something. Then I tried it on a few friends. But I got blown up in Iraq for the third time in 2006. Mm. So I, I was diagnosed with PTSD, mm -hmm. with severe PTSD, the mm -hmm. trauma. Um, I had TBI, which is the um, traumatic brain injury, because mm -hmm. I actually, when I got blown up, my head got hit into the steering console, mm -hmm. loss of memory, and <clears throat> so I was in shell shock for a, for a while. I was actually also paralyzed from the waist down in a mm -hmm. wheelchair, mm -hmm. and I came back, had a really bad divorce, mm -hmm. and you know, so downward spiral. Mm -hmm. I was in the worst place that I can be. I ended up homeless, living in my car. Mm -hmm. You know, had four different degrees, but couldn't do anything with those degrees. Right. And one day I'm sitting in my storage unit in California. It's hot as ever, mm. sweating. And then the box of books I was sitting on broke. And then Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich fell out. And Love that, that book. Which is what I should have been reading, right? right? So I started reading it. And the first chapter talked about desire. Mm. And what I learned is desire is the thing that will kind of keep you up late at night and wake you up early mm -hmm. in the morning. So then my desire then was to get myself out of the situation I was in. Mm -hmm. And I started reading more books. Then, mm. you know, I joined a network marketing company, which is, flooded with you know personal development yep. so I started on this personal development journey and then I realized 90 percent of my success was sitting up here mm. and it was all a matter of how I looked at myself the affirmations I used to speak to myself speak life into myself on a mm -hmm. daily basis right um, <clears throat> so I started doing that and the success started to show up and I was like wait a minute it can't be that simple mm. can't be that easy the truth is it's not easy it's simple yeah if it was that. easy everybody would do it so yeah. it's just a simple mechanical thing and I said okay let me test it with someone else mm. and I tested with my wife at the time my girlfriend mm -hmm. and I was like wow it's not too bad it looks like it works so <laughs> you tested on all your friends I tested on all my friends right <laughs> which, which is what you do so I tested and everybody started to have you know I created this different group this mm -hmm. culture if you mm -hmm. may right of folks that are just positive and sometimes people think being positive is uh, just kind of being weak, but yeah. it's not. It's not being passive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a choice. You have to choose to be positive because 87% of the world is negative. Right. Right. So I said, okay, I need to figure out how this thing really works and the mechanics of it. So then I, I went back on my education as being a psychologist. Um, and I said, okay, let me look at the mental space of this. And I took the human behavior aspect of it and watch what was happening to people mm. on a daily basis. Yeah. And I started creating um, my own curriculum for it, which actually turned out to be the Today's Today book, book, right? Yes, yeah. which so, I started reading. Which, and by the way, I know it's probably just rocking your mind right now. <laughs> I, even, I even have some pages written out. Uh, I've started the workbook. Yeah, that's, so that made it a workbook yeah. because mm -hmm. there's so many books out there and you, you read the book, you yeah. get the information, but there's no transformation. How do you apply it, right. right? I always say act, act. ACT stands for Action Creates Transformation. There you go. You got to put the, the information into action in order for you to transform. Exactly. And that's really what people want, but because of their mind and other things, it causes them to not get into action, exactly. which, you know, which stops their, their results. Yeah, the lack of action is just a lack of confidence. Yeah, I like right? that. So when, when you're not confident enough to take action, then we look at fear. And mm. most people, you know, they use like, 
false evidence of pain real. Those are all really pretty. Mm -hmm. But the truth of it, my definition of fear is this. It's the future anticipation. It's the anticipation of a future pain. Mm -hmm. So whatever that pain is, could be financial, could mm -hmm. be emotional, could be spiritual, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we're not doing something because we're afraid of what's going to happen right. in the future. That the future doesn't exist until you create it. We're all living in moments of now, which is why the book was called Today's the Day. Like, what are you going to do today? Yeah. What are you going to do to make every second count? That's all we have is today. Exactly. Yeah. Right? The future is only built of moments of now. Ten mm -hmm. minutes from now while we're still on here, it's the moment of now getting mm -hmm. there. And if we're going to take what we're sharing with everyone's time that's viewing us right now to give the best that we have so that right. they can receive that, then we're serving in the now. As the future comes, then I'll have the best now always. Mm -hmm. Right. So with the book, I really created a blueprint mm -hmm. and I wanted to have a conversation with the reader mm. as if I'm sitting there with them, filling out the workbook and fill it out. It goes back and forth. And what happens is once they get to the end of the book, if they're vulnerable enough to go through the exercises, mm -hmm. then they can receive transformation. Mm -hmm. See, what most books do with people is they read the information. They get mm -hmm. information, but they don't yep. get transformation. Yep. I wanted to work with folks step by step all the way. And I know I can't do that. In the book, you'll see probably the first thing I said, my goal is to touch a billion lives. Yeah. Can't do it by myself. Right. Um, that's why I created an amazing team to help me do that. Mm -hmm. But the book, I can get the book into the hands of a billion people. Right. Uh, the, last year it came out, we've only got it into the hands of a little over 40,000 people so mm -hmm. far. So <laughs> I got ways to go. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully after this show, just so you guys know <laughs> that uh, some of you would be inspired enough to, you know, get a copy of the book. Is it on Amazon? It's not on Amazon. You can okay. only get it to at todaysthedaybook.com. The okay. audio version is on Amazon though. Okay. Right. So I, awesome. I took it off Amazon because I really want to, control uh, how this information gets out at a certain level. So tell everybody the website again. Today's it's todaysthedaybook.com. Okay, yeah. perfect. So if you missed that, you can just Google Obam Bowen, and yeah. you can find ObamaBowen.com. It's on there, too. <laughs> we, we can Google you. Yeah, just Google me. As my daughter says, Dad, you're Googleable. It's like, thank you very much. I <laughs> love being Googleable. <laughs> I know. And I love when people stalk me, right? They well, also stalking stalk is the best compliment <laughs> that you can give. So I'm like, I love stalkers. Good stalkers. Yeah, good, good stalkers. Good stalkers. Good stalkers. And the bad ones, we use the police to kind of hold them off. I know. Yeah. I know. So what would you say is probably the biggest problem that you face when first working with people that maybe haven't had success or haven't been confident or have a hard time getting started? Like, what's wow. that biggest? That's uh, such a powerful question, mm -hmm. actually. It's a simple question, but it's a very profound question. One of the things I share with folks before I even go ahead with anything is I share with them, I so, look, you're here because you're a winner. You've been yeah. successful already. When you think about the process every child goes through before they're born, you beat out, you know, over 50 billion sperm that races to that egg and <laughs> you're, you're a, a champion, right? <laughs> so my, my daughter, her name is Miracle. Mm. She was a triplet mm. and my two boys didn't make it. Mm -hmm. She won the race. Mm. She was born a champion. Mm -hmm. So getting individuals to understand that they were already a winner, you won the moment you actually started walking on your own. That's How many great. times did you fall down before mm -hmm. you got up and started walking? Who cares? You just did it until you walked. Mm -hmm. And so with everything in our lives, but then we get to becoming an adult and we start to get responsibility mm -hmm. and we forget the fun aspect of mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. You know, the responsibilities of life. I watch my daughter now and I, I learn so much more from her just in the human development portion. I sit down and I watch her. She falls down, she gets up, or she'll go put herself down when she wants them. She'll just say, Daddy, up, <laughs> and I'll pick her up, yeah. right? How many times when we fall down, we just don't want to ask for help? And yeah. for most people, they're not successful because they're not asking for help. Well, that's another great talk. I, I definitely want to go more into that because th that's something we talk a lot about on the show, yeah. is I think in general, people have a hard time asking for help, yeah. especially when they need it exactly. most. Because they think, oh, I don't want to bother somebody, yeah. or I'm not worthy of that. And that was a really big thing that I learned that is a key to success is when you're drowning and when you don't have an answer and when you need the support, I, once I reach out and trusting that the people around us will give us that support. Exactly. So I want to talk more about that before when we come back from the, the break. Absolutely. You're like, we're like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love, <laughs> I love it. it. Okay, yeah. we're going to go take on a short break. Um, I'm Becky Sampson, and this is About Time. Um, we'll be right back in just a moment. Thanks. Awesome sauce. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Munley and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, 
the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. We're back, and I'm Becky Sampson, and this is It's About Time. I'm talking with my dear friend Obam Bowen, a master career strategist, entrepreneur, and author. And we're talking about the ins and outs of success. So, gosh, right before we went to, to break, you were talking about this. One thing I love that you talk about is what you learn from your daughter. How old is your daughter now? She's Miracle. 16 months. 16 month. months. Like, I know. She's like yeah. a little one, and I she get to, is. I watch so many of your videos of her and. <laughs> I love that you have used her, not used her, you're utilizing right. the lessons that you're learning with watching her. Yeah. What would you say is the number one thing that you've learned from her so far in the 18 months? So I, in my seminars, I teach a lot and, and share with folks that everyone wants success, mm. but they don't want to break it in two. First, you have to embrace the suck before you get the cess, right? So <laughs> what I... Wait, say that again? First, you have to embrace the suck before suck. you get the cess, right? Uh, so. Sess is an Indian Hindu word meaning abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So what I love watching my daughter is the suck part. Mm -hmm. She'll fall down so many times mm -hmm. and get back up with a smile. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I have decided that we're never going to tell her, like, no, don't do this. We'll always say thank you. We'll, we'll reinforce the mm -hmm. opposite or reinforce what it is that we want. Right. So if she, like the other day, she grabbed a knife mm -hmm. and we'll say, thank you so much. That is oh, so sweet yeah. of you. Right, so she doesn't understand the danger of the knife. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason to alert her or scare her and mm -hmm. she accidentally cuts herself because mm -hmm. that's not what you want. The outcome I want is what we basically promote. Kids are gonna hear the word no mm -hmm. 30,000 times mm -hmm. by the time they get to the third grade. Mm -hmm. They're gonna hear it 150,000 times by the time they get to high school. Yeah. I'm just working on minimizing the no's. And what I've learned the most from her is watching that positive reinforcement of how and who she's becoming. So mm -hmm. we're on the plane yesterday, and the and my wife is sitting there, and you know, <laughs> in the first class cabin, you have the, the, you start with drinks before anything else. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they came, my wife got a mai tai, mm -hmm. and it's Hawaiian, it's a yeah, it's yeah, a Hawaiian yeah. airline, so they start with the mai tais, and then they got her um, some wine. So my daughter grabbed the the bottle of wine and mm -hmm. the store. She came over. She's like, oh my gosh, she's going. So my daughter doesn't know panic. Right. So she looked at her like, what's wrong with you? So I looked at her and I smiled. I said, thank, thank you. you. And she gave me the glass. Uh, now, when she, because that, that behavior is foreign to her, mm -hmm. she was like, what is she doing? Mm -hmm. But I just reached over and I said, thank you. And she's like, there you go. Mm -hmm. I was a glass of wine wherever it was going to be a catastrophe. But what I'm learning is how we treat others is how they treat us. Oh, isn't that, isn't that so true? It's like, so I, true. I always say that we also teach people how to treat us. How to us. treat us, yeah. And, and a lot of people will be victim. We've talked a lot about this on the show, too, yeah. is being a victim rather than taking responsibility, 100% responsibility for your life, which then goes back to really what you said about success, right, is being grateful for those moments yeah. and letting, I think that's one of the first things I remembered about our conversation is you and I talk so much about letting things flow instead yeah. of instead of forcing things. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And you've, I mean, that's, I mean, you are so masterful at that. Thank you. You know, when when we take look at it from a cosmic perspective, right? Yeah. The universe is created or is designed to give us everything that we need. We need mm -hmm. everything we ask for. And I share with people, success is like walking into Baskin Robbins. Mm -hmm. So there's 31 flavors. Mm -hmm. Most people know exactly what they're going to get, mm -hmm. but because we're like, oh, I want to touch this and I want to touch that, <laughs> I, <learned laughs> I want to taste this and sample that. So I learned this, this lesson from actually watching my wife in Baskin Robbins for mm -hmm. years. And I was the guy who's like, I wanted to taste this, I wanted to taste that, I wanted to taste this, I wanted to taste that. At the end of the day, I knew I wanted only vanilla. Mm -hmm. Vanilla? Yeah, vanilla. You're vanilla. boring. I want it, yeah, just with, vanilla. With, with like vanilla bean or anything? The, the or vanilla no? bean, just... no, vanilla. I need it. Vanilla, 
and chocolate chip. Oh, I you know like I the needed black that. and white, being in the egg. Mix it in there. Yeah. Right, so I know I needed that, but mm -hmm. I want to try all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And after a while, that teenager, I used to say, oh, the pimple-faced teenager, standing mm -hmm. behind her and going like, okay, great. Okay, sir, we'll be right back. And mm -hmm. he went, my wife came in, and all she wanted was chocolate chip cookie dough. Mm -hmm. And she'll go right there and get it. Mm -hmm. The universe is the same way. The universe delivers to you exactly what you want when you're clear mm -hmm. on what you want and you're willing to take the actions towards that end. But if you're kind of wishy-washy, if you, eh, even though you know what you want, but you're not saying it, or people's like, I know what I want. I don't have to do affirmations. Really? Mm -hmm. Seriously? Affirmations is not the end result, but it's a means to the end result. Right. Well, it's, it's reframing it's the brain. It's reframing. And the, and the neurotransmitters. Exactly. Right? Because that's something that we talked about is people don't understand the brain and how it works. And when you learn how it works, then you have the power and the ability to manipulate it. Exactly. I don't like the word manipulate, well, but that's really is, what we're yeah. doing. We're manipulating our outside yeah. world by changing the inside. Yeah, so inside one job. is master, one is always going to be servant. Mm -hmm. And when you understand how the brain works, then you have to, you have to use the mastery of yourself mm -hmm. to serve you, mm -hmm. right? So when you understand the, the brain has, there's the conscious mind, which we're talking to each mm -hmm. other and right now, and then there's a the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So the subconscious mind is, operates like a library with files. Everything you've seen here, touch or experience in your life, it files it in your limbic system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you got out of a relationship that was hurtful and you got into one that seems like it's going to be hurtful, then it pulls that memory back or that file back mm -hmm. up from the file and be like, oh, don't go down that road. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty similar. So you know, one of the companies my wife and I own is a relationship company. Mm -hmm. So in our relationship retreats, we treat, teach a lot of the young women, you know, how they can attract their exact right. spouse. Mm -hmm. And same thing for the men. I use this in my second book. Um, about relationships, I actually wrote down one of the one of the chapters. I can think it's the fourth chapter. What my actual affirmation was that I said aloud twice a day, mm. and then my wife showed up. The <laughs> first thing—it's crazy how this works, right? Yeah. But my wife, the first thing I wrote down on there was long, flowing, curly black hair. Aww. You see my wife. Yes. She's good, just oh. anyways, we're not gonna go there because it's not about that show. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. We were, I was talking with a friend of mine at, at an event and in walks this woman with just long flowing curly black mm -hmm. hair. And I actually, and some people, oh, you don't believe in that woo stuff, I do. Yeah, it does. It the works. energy in the room changed. I just had like a chill, like what? And I looked around, I just, I was like, dude, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went over, I introduced myself and I don't know what happened, but what it sounded like, and I told her was, you're gonna be my wife. And um, when you're ready, you'll ask me to marry you. So she looked at me just like you're looking at me right now, like I'm crazy. <laughs> Cuckoo, right? So three years, she tried to avoid mm -hmm. me. And here's what I learned. What you resist persists. Mm, absolutely. So she tried to resist, but I'm still her husband today. Mm -hmm. And three years later, guess who asked me to marry her? She did. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> does this stuff work? Well, it works, but you have to work it. Right? Exactly. So a dream without a goal is uh, just a dream. Mm -hmm. A goal without a plan, well, you're just wishing. Mm -hmm. So that plan has to have an action to it. Consistent, persistent action. And Why then do you think most up. people aren't willing to do the work? Well, because it's hard. That, that, that's, yeah. that's the truth. The fact of the matter is success is not easy. If yeah. it was easy, everyone would do it. And the fact that it's hard, if we teach others how to embrace the hard, mm -hmm. then it's not an issue. We want to tell people like technology is going to, it doesn't matter what technology we have today, mm -hmm. you still have to do the work. Yeah. Like, me being on the show today, it's mm -hmm. a great. The, the, for me, the, let's look at it. Two purposes here. Mm -hmm. One of the purposes is to educate mm -hmm. um, the audience and help them. Mm -hmm. And for me, what are we all getting out of it? That mm -hmm. you, the audience get kind of some of my experience nuggets. and nuggets from years, mm -hmm. 23 years of being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And what I get out of it is the opportunity to present and share with them the possibility of maybe one person saying, you know what? That guy sounds cool. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll buy his book. Okay, mm -hmm. no problem. I still have to come on the show and do the work. work. I yeah. still have to come and inspire someone that they can receive the information to eventually have a transformation. And sometimes I think in life, people are not open enough to just tell the truth. Right. No. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think work to me, I, I was one of those people in my old life. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do work. I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to do. But, you know, I often I've been thinking about this concept of bodybuilding, right? Spiritual mm. bodybuilding. Yeah. Oh, I like and, that. Uh, yeah, it's isn't a good it? One. I know. We're going to write a book. Yeah, spiritual so, bodybuilding. Like, really, let's go. Like, that's that's, that's like it. really good. Awesome. 
Yeah, because Coming a lot of next people, year. if you want, right, <laughs> if you want a certain skill and ability, or if you want success, oh. you got to be willing to go to the gym. You can't just sit and watch other people do it. Oh. <laughs> and in the process of sitting in the gym, you've got to get on the machine and really do the work. And in the process of doing the work, it's painful, yeah. right? Like, but it's the very thing that we resist is that resistance that's going to build the muscle. Yeah. But there is a period of time that once you do the work, then you can kind of relax and, and let the body repair itself, and you're going to go back and you're going to be stronger. Exactly. And it's so interesting to watch... I kind of embrace those kind of moments now where I'm like, okay, this is it. We're going to work. <laughs> and, and for me, I don't know if this has been your experience, but for me, it's always been able to keep it in the now, like your book, Today is Today. Like, what can I do today right. in order to change my life? Or what's the work that I can do today? And it may seem really difficult. And tomorrow may be a little more simple, right? right? And we should actually change the easy button. I used to have all my clients get easy buttons, but it's not easy. It needs to be simple. Yeah, it's that simple. was simple. Right? Yeah. Ding. The simple button. See, easy is easily marketed. Yes. See, we do a lot of the things that's marketable. The magic pill. Right? It's the magic pill. Like, mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear, like, you know what? Um, being healthy is 80% mm -hmm. nutrition. Oh, no way. We don't yeah, want to hear that. We want to go, let's get this 90-day plan. Let's get this pill. Let's get this 30-day plan reset. We'll get you going. But at the end of the day, you still got to go do some movement. I know. And you've recently lost quite a bit of weight. Yeah. I did. I also went vegetarian. Right? Oh, Ooh. vegetarian. Veg sexy. <laughs> or or as, as my, my politically correct daughter says, Dad, you're more pescatarian because you eat fish. I'm like, whatever that means. Aww. But yeah. So no chicken, no beef, no other meats except fish. Yeah. Was and that I a hard said, transition for you? I mean, like you... For years it was, but recently so I've been traveling a lot around the world mm -hmm. and realizing you know, different cultures, different foods don't agree with me very well, but mm -hmm. the one thing universal across the world is vegetables. So mm -hmm. I said, veggie it is. Um, and then fish, it doesn't matter how you prepare, it's light. Yeah. So I started doing that and then a couple pounds started melting off because I work out all the time and I run a lot, I ride a lot. My eyes have been getting big because I've been on the bike just hitting it. But the one thing that I have that's consistent across my travels around the world is when I eat and when I work out. Mm -hmm. You can do cardio anywhere, mm -hmm. and you can eat veggies anywhere. Everybody has veggies. So now it's, it sounded weird because it's only been about five weeks that I'm like a vegetarian or a pescatarian. But you're doing the work. I'm doing that's, the work, that's, and that's really what matters. The theme, that's yeah. really what we can kind of wrap things up on is that you got to be willing to do the work. Yeah. If you do the work, then the success is on the other side yeah. of it. Most yeah. people are afraid of that four-letter work. I know. Work. But mm -hmm. success doesn't come without it. Yeah. Otherwise, you stay in the suck and you don't get the sense. <laughs> I love it. Hey, where does everybody find you if they want to see? Because you do events and you I do events books um, all stuff. over the place, write books. Now, the best way to find me now, since we're social media there, well, Google. I'm Googleable. Google. So you can Google Obama Bowen, and uh, hopefully Obama doesn't show up. I love you, Mr. <laughs> President. <laughs> but I think that's the only comparison. Yeah. I'm the bald guy, and uh, he's the one with gray hair. But yeah, that's awesome. You can Google me or on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram at Dr. Obama Bowen. So, and he does a lot of really, really cool videos and stuff. I love them. I do. I, watch I them. do. You do? All right. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I, now I know. I'm, I'm going to do some specials for you soon. So thanks so much for being on the show. Absolutely. We're going to have to end the, the show. But, I know. Um, I hate to end it. We I need know. to do another segment I know. We need on to something keep going, else. Keep yeah. going. But we're out of time, so we'll have to wrap it up. Um, I'm Becky Sampson with It's About Time on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking to Obama Bowen, a master career strategist, entrepreneur, and author. So thanks for joining us today, and thanks to our broadcast engineer and floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who makes this whole show possible. And of course, I'll see you on Wednesdays for more of It's About Time on Think Tech. I'm Becky Sampson. Mahala. Bye-bye. Mahalo, plenty. <laughs>